Yep, a bind and fly racing drone. Seen it before? Well, this one. This one actually takes a 5S battery. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're going to be checking out this bind and fly. This is the Fury B at Dark Max 220, and the reason I'm so excited, like I mentioned, this bad boy takes a 5S battery. Now, if you're new to FPV drone racing, most of our drones out there today race around on a 4S battery. They get some pretty crazy speeds, but to put it on a 5S and for a cheap bind and fly, I think it's just showing the way the technology is going and how the hobby's heading. We all want more speed, so uh, that's what this drone might be about. So what we're going to be do, what we're going to be doing, this is the part one review. We're going to, oh my god, I can't talk properly. So what we're going to be doing, this is the part one review. We're going to be sticking the Dark Max on the bench, breaking it down, having a look at its components, its quality, everything that goes together to make this a pretty cool bind and fly. And then in part two, we'll take it out to the field, rip it around, and hit it with speed gun Sally. I'm pretty excited, so uh, let's stick it on the bench and get started. Oh, and I should mention too. You know, Fury Bee's making some really good stuff lately. I did the Fury B, a review of the Fury B X215 Pro. I'll leave a link up there. That bad boy was like 150 bucks. The Fury B Futon was a great racer, so uh, I really think Fury B's starting to listen to the community and build some really, really cool stuff. Anyway, enough rambling, let's get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench. It's a five inch racer, and as a bit of an overview, it looks like this thing is designed to be A, very, very strong, and B, very, very quick. Now, Fury B is the company that makes this, and it's kind of a little bit interesting that, uh, you know, they seem to be having some conflicting drones. So here I've got the Fury B. This is the uh, X215 Pro and they both seem like they're kind of doing the same thing. So both of these drones are sort of competing for each other and they're around the same price. I think when I reviewed this one, it was 150 and I think this bad boy here is about 170. Now the big selling point for me and why I'm so excited about this one, it does look like it's got some great components in here. It's actually got some brand name motors, which is a bit of a change for Fury B. And uh, the big one, it can rock a 5S battery, up to a 6S battery actually, which is absolutely insane. Anyway, the first thing we should do, we should put it on the scales and find how much it weighs, and then what we'll do, we'll break it down, have a look at all the components and sort of get on with the rest of the review. But, take your bets, let's tear off our scales here. I'm gonna guess about 330 grand. Oh, hang on, that must be because the XC60's hang off. That's 280 grams, okay. <laughs> 282 grams, that's absolutely ridiculous. Now, one little side note I do want to point out, mine didn't ship with an antenna, so we actually, if you have a look at the case that it shipped in, it was the dodgiest cardboard box I've ever seen. So most times they ship with something, this one just shipped in a cardboard box and I don't actually have an FPV antenna. So for the sake of comparison, let's put this little one, this is on from the other Fury Beat, 289 grams. That's actually really impressive. That's ridiculous. I can't believe that thing is so light. So, uh, you know, there's a good thing when you mix a light quadcopter with a high amount of thrust, they tend to go very, very fast in a straight line. So uh, this thing, hopefully, should be an absolute rocket. Anyway, let's get on with the rest of the review. So look, with some of the components, we are gonna look at all the components, but look, you do get these extras. I didn't get an FPV antenna, but you do get some little Velcro straps, which to be honest, look pretty rubbish. Uh, and then there's some little nuts and bolts to screw your props down but you don't get too much else besides the drone. So what we should actually do, let's have a look from the outside in, let's have a look at a bit of the quad, but the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the props off because they make it very hard to film, they're sort of stabbing me, so we'll take them off and then we can zoom in a little bit. Alrighty, now the props themselves, they come with two packs, so they're the Gemfan 51, 52s, not my favorite prop really, you know, but props aren't really too much of a big deal. I prefer Cyclones, these are, they're still a good prop. The one interesting thing, it says four blade on the website and then you actually get some three blades, so uh, I'm wondering what what's going on there. I do hope this thing can take 5S and it's not just the marketing hype boys sort of hyping it up. But look, they're not a bad prop, but props aren't a biggie because everyone I know just puts on their favorite props anyway, the brand that they actually like. Now the first part we're gonna look at is the actual frame itself. So you can see from its shape, it's a, it's definitely, it's a true X, which means it's the same distance from the from these two motors across the front as it is from front to back. So uh, some people like that, some people don't for a sort of racing type of frame. I think a stretched X is a little bit better, which means these parts come out a little bit longer, but look, it's still gonna rip around. It should be a fantastic acro frame. And I do think it's gonna get really, really quick. Now flipping it over, you can see it is one solid base plate. And uh, I've gotta say it's made up of carbon fiber. It's four four millimeters thick and uh, you know if I'm given that a flex it's pretty it's a pretty strong piece it's not the strongest I've seen but it's definitely not as flexy as something like the Copus or uh, the F200 it's about on par with the other Fury B frame so yeah I'm um, overall look I think it's a 
it's a pretty rigid bad boy right there. So with that out of the way, let's zoom in and look at the individual components. Now right here, this is where things start to look a little bit different. So this is the first time that I've reviewed a Fury B frame or a Fury B drone. It actually has some brand name motors on here. So we've got some DYS motors. These are the 2205s, 2550 KV racing editions and uh, you know, I think this thing is going to absolutely rip. I think on a 4S battery, this thing would be pretty quick. The high KV with a 4S, I really like that sort of prop size that they've got with the KV combination. I think that means it's going to absolutely slice through the air. Is the 2500 KV too fast for a 5S though? I definitely think it's too fast for a 6S. It's going to be putting a lot of stress on that motor because that means it's going to be spinning very, very fast. And especially when you combine it with like a 5S battery, it might be a rocket, but it actually might burst into flames. So that part's going to be pretty interesting to find. Out. Now moving towards the inside, usually you see some ESCs on the arms. We don't have any of that here because we've got our ESCs in the middle in a super clean little stack. I'm just going to flash some pictures on the screen, but there's really just two boards in here. That's it. And then it's ready to end your receiver and then it's ready to rock and roll. Now what I will do, we're going to take this apart in a minute, but uh, this has got some pretty clever designs the way it sort of all goes together. It hinges on these two little parts right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. That little screw, that part, you just simply unscrew that from the bottom. The top canopy pops off and uh, yeah, pretty ingenious little locking mechanism. So what we should do now, we should take the top off because then it's gonna make it a lot easier to talk about the internals inside. Alrighty, so taking the top off, it's pretty easy if you need to work on your drone. I'm gonna unplug my FPV camera here because that should make things a little bit easier. Excuse me one sec. Glad, yeah, that was tough. Alrighty, so there we go. So you can see it's a pretty neat stack inside. On the back, okay, you've got, we're gonna get these parts out of the way. So you've got your little pigtail, that's an RP SMA pigtail right there. Uh, and then you've really only got your two little boards. So in the middle, you've got your ESC. So that's a 30 amp, the Bioheli S ESC, it's a four in one. And uh, the part I'm actually concerned about, look, I think 30 amps is fine, you know, especially if you're gonna be using 4S, no dramas whatsoever, especially combined with these motors, but, if you are mixing this bad boy with a 5 or a 6S battery, you could, I reckon, be asking for some trouble. Now that's also rocking your PDB, so that's exactly where you hook up your XT60 connector. Again, one thing I do, this is quite common in a lot of frames that I see from PureB actually, there's no strain relief. So we really need some way of securing these down with like a little zip tie or something, because otherwise, if you're in a hard crash and your battery gets jettisoned off, this thing is just gonna rip it straight off the pads. It might even potentially break your board, but a little bit of strain relief. I'm gonna end up zip tying, zip tying mine to the arms like this actually, and I wish that's how it comes because that could be a little bit of trap for new pilots out there. But yeah, you wanna make sure you've got some strain relief on your XD60, on your battery cord, because that might save you in the long run. Now on top of that, this is where we have one of the stars of the shows of the build. So this is our VTX flight controller combo. So it says an, it's an Omnibus F3 in the manual, but uh, it's a little bit different than that. It's actually like, and then it also says an AR tower. So uh, what that is, that's an F4 flight controller, the rocking beta flight, which is pretty cool. It's got a built-in OSD. Now F4 is about as good as we're flying around at the moment. There is some F7 boards out there, but they're definitely overkill. I was pretty happy with the F3 boards, but looks like the hobby's moving towards F4, and I know this thing's gonna perform fantastic. Probably exciting part it's got your VTX built in here so uh, you have a little connector you can see this is underneath your receiver there's a bunch of different receiver options I'll link them all down below so uh, we're going to take this off right here and oh, we can't really see too much more but then we've also got it mixed with our VTX so I really like that by pressing some buttons on the outside this is probably one of my favorite things so you can adjust your power and your channel and here's also your boot button but I really like how they're actually labeled and you've got a different sort of channel for each part because sometimes it can get a little bit confusing when you're pressing those buttons I don't think it's as high-tech say something that was on the Hollybro Copsis where you can change it with your radio or something like that. But, you know, I'm not complaining because these buttons are more than easily accessible on the outside. So I think that's a great little inclusion. Now those power levels, you can have 25, 100 or 200 milliwatts. You know, 200 milliwatts seems to be pretty common and 25 is pretty common for the races, but it's nice to be able to sort of cycle through. Choose your own power level. Uh, you've got your little USB port on the side so you can program it onto your computer. And then at the front, this is where we've got our little receiver hooked up and we've also got a buzzer now. So it's pretty simple stuff in there. There's not too much to go through in terms of the components. There is the camera at the front and uh, that's just a sort of nothing too exciting. That's just like a HS 1177. It is a 2.5 millimeter lens, which means I think that's a good mix between fisheye so you can see a lot, but it's not too distorted. You still have some depth perception in there. So I think that's a pretty good size camera lens. Uh, and other than that, it's it's a pretty basic frame and that's probably why it's coming in so light as well. Like everything that's in here, you've got some really cool stuff. I do worry about it a little bit on 5S. Of course, we're gonna give it a go, but it could either result in crazy speeds, could result in fire, or maybe it could result in both. So it's gonna be, you know, interesting to find that out. 
But what we should do, let's put it back together and then we talk, can talk about a little bit more about the design of the thing. Oh, and I should also mention too, you've got some little LEDs at the back. So these are programmable LEDs. You can set them up, you know, to have whatever color you want to sort of do what you want. LEDs are fun when you're racing your mates. And if you're flying by yourself, it's not going to make a difference because you're never going to see them because you've got your goggles on. But when you're overtaking your mates or you want to overtake your mates, when you've got LEDs, in my opinion, it makes it a lot more fun when you can chase them down with the goggles on. Anyway, let's have a bit of a chat about the design. So I kind of like the unibody design. I think that helps it remain very, very light. It's probably not as strong as the individual arms, but it does feel very very stiff for a solid base plate. One interesting design part here, you can see the camera, look they're trying to go after some camera protection, it's not as well protected as the other Fury V that we looked at that was sort of in that aluminium pod, the X215, but you know it's got some protection, it's not as bad as like the Copus or Coppus whatever it is where it's sticking right out the front. But I, why, why do manufacturers keep doing this? Why don't they protect their camera better? So you can see in a front on crash, this thing is just gonna get absolutely wrecked by tree branches, you know. You don't have the most expensive camera in there, so it might be a little bit cheaper to replace, but we don't wanna have to do that. Please, look, it might be some design thing, so you have to keep buying more stuff, but I would just like better camera protection. I don't know how many times I've said that in the reviews, but it's getting a little bit frustrating. One part I do like is this part right here, and this is where we can actually attach our GoPro. So you've got some nice little slits in the side right here. I'll flash some pictures on the screen anyway. That's gonna make it super easy when we want to attach our GoPro. So I'll probably be using some of the cheaper straps that came with it to sort of secure this down. And it's on a 30 degree angle. And I think 30 degrees is about the right degrees for me with my flying with a GoPro, especially if you're gonna be flying this thing on 5S, it's gonna be so quick, you definitely wouldn't want any less. There's nothing worse for me. Some frames have like a 20 degree or a 10 degree angle, and that is just too frustrating because you can't use a flat mount and you can't use an angled one because then it ends up to be way more. It's good that this one's on a 30 degree angle. Now you've got your antenna that comes sticking up out the back here. Of course, mine didn't come with an antenna and I don't know if I just got unlucky or something like that, but that's, you know, a little bit worrying. It would be nice if it did come with an antenna. No biggie, because you're probably going to replace that out anyway. But uh, when you're flying around, I think it'd be better if it just came straight out the back. I might actually do that. I might try and zip tie it down so it's coming out the back. Because in its current state, if you fly along and you clip a tree, it's just going to snap this bad boy clean off. So if it was just coming out the back, I think that would be a lot better. And also offer a bit of strain relief, because these pagoda antennas, or where it's joining right here, this is definitely going to be a weak point no matter what antenna you put on. Flipping it over, this is where you're going to secure your battery. I would like a sticky pad or something under here to help you hold it down, but I think it's designed pretty well. I would like some better camera protection. I think it's pretty smart the way that it's held in together with these screws that slide into the bottom. I know Armiton's done that for a long time, and by having some two mil plates on here, it means it's going to be very thick and very hard to rip out. Is it as strong as some of the other designs? Mm, it's got some pros and cons. I think on a really unlucky crash, if you got it on the wrong angle, just nicking it under here, it might rip the pot out, but overall I think it's going to hold very, very tight. And also, it feels pretty robust, so there's lots of standoffs throughout the thing holding this thing together, making it very, very rigid. It's a very, very rigid drone, but it would want to be because it's going to be going very fast. Now, the quality of the whole thing overall, I would say for Fury B, it's it's probably a little bit better than what I was sort of expecting. The soldering, maybe like a six, six and a half out of ten. The quality of the components, well the camera is average, but I'm pretty impressed with the other stuff that's on here. Even though I didn't get an antenna, what I would have liked is holding down your little uh, pigtail right here for your VTX, I would have liked a little bit of hot glue on there or something, because if this thing gets ripped off, that means your VTX is going to keep pumping out some signal and that's going to result in a cooked F, a cooked flight controller and VTX. So uh, you don't want this little cord to get ripped out whatsoever. So if you've got one of these, make sure you're securing it down. Now look, there's no Loctite in the build or anything like that. So if I got this, I would definitely be going through putting your own Loctite in because you don't want anything coming loose in its vibrations. This one's a little bit loose because I undid it before when I took the top off. But yeah, so I think, you know, it's quality. I'm going to give it about a 6 out of 10. So moving on to the pros and the cons. I think this frame does a lot of things right. I mean, for the price, you really can't complain when you've got a bind and fly drone. Comes with, it can rock a 5S battery. You've got some brand name motors on here, an F4 fly can controller, super clean stack, it's super light. This thing, if it doesn't burst into flames, it should be, so definitely stay around for part two because we want to find that at first, but this thing should be an absolute rocket. Now, some of the things I do like as well, you know, designs like how, I like how rigid this thing is, I like how it comes together, very, very secure, looks very tough, I, even things like incorporating a GoPro mount and stuff like that. I think that's a great idea. Some cons, things I don't like, well, obviously camera protection. I wish that would change a little bit. I wish the FPV antenna would come out the back instead of up the top on a pigtail like this. And then there's just a little one. Some things like, you know, secure this down with a little zip tie before you ship it out because that might catch off new pilots. And then just lock tightening the bolts and those sorts of things. But overall, I think, honestly, 
for the money and if this thing performs like we're hoping it performs it's it's going to definitely turn some heads i would like to change the props as well but that might just be nitpicking you know that's that's my personal choice when i go 5s i'm definitely going to be putting some cyclones on here because these props in its current state i reckon are just way too much especially if you're going to be going a 5s battery 4s is going to be fine but you know and the 30 amp esc is that going to be enough on those bigger heavier higher voltage batteries i'm not too sure Alrighty, so there it is there's my part one review of the fury b a dark max and, and you know what i just can't wait to get out there rip it around and put it on 5s because if this thing handles 5s it's going to be an absolute beast and for the price it's crazy the amount of performance that you're actually getting on 4s i think it's going to go pretty hard as well but 5s that's where the money's at and if you can get a 5s drone for as cheap as this bad boy's claiming this thing should be an absolute weapon anyway hope that you guys enjoyed that drop some comments down below are we going to get fast or are we going to get fire speed or smoke what's this thing going to do when we really crank up the juice put it through its paces because I can't wait. But regardless, it's going to be fun. And as always, happy flying. Oh, also drop some comments down below for Crash Test Cal. How fast when he's on the other end of the speed gun? How many miles per hour do you think this bad boy is going to do? Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.